You know a lot about that, and especially in the Western countries, we condemn the alcoholism, condemn drugs, which are very bad for the body. But we do see a lot of people in the leadership position who do not have thyroid problems, but who have gluttony problems, who have serious discipline issues, and the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. And if we don't have that with what we eat, and sometimes people complain and they say, well, this just runs in my family. Well, it, you can't blame your family for why you're drinking Coke and eating burgers every day. That's not a family thing. That's decisions already. Uh, yeah, there's right. some things we all have that we have to deal with the things of our past, but we have to take responsibility for that. And we see this a lot of times on the stage of people um, in, in Christian circles who are overweight. And then very soon we find ourselves battling with diseases. We should have not even faced those diseases. And we didn't need to get that medication. We didn't need to even ask God for healing if we would have just taken care of our temple. And then that spills into other areas of our life. Where we begin to compromise. This doesn't mean that every overweight person doesn't have uh, holiness or righteousness. We're not saying that. What we're saying is that we do need to return to discipline. We need to return to crucifying our flesh instead of satisfying our flesh and that we need to live a fasted life. Um, the Lord calls us to that. Uh, now, if we go a little bit more into the actual uh, fasting, and you already alluded to this, so what is ketosis? Well, we are incredibly made by a creator, right? So God has backup plans for everything. Uh, ketosis is when the body recognizes, I'm going to give you the quick version, when the body recognizes uh, we don't have any more stored glyco gl carbohydrates, glycogen, glucose. I can store about 2,400 calories, let's say, of glucose, okay? Uh, well, it's converted, it becomes glycogen or vice versa. But once that is depleted, you know, let's say I went and fasted all day and I went in, on a 10-mile walk and I just depleted all my carbohydrates, well, instead of dying, we switch, our body switches. It's how it conserves energy. So now it's no longer going to conserve carbohydrates. It's going to conserve what they call ketone, ketosis is, is ketone bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fat, now my fat cells are being broken down and they're being converted to fuel. And that's where like the term gluconeogenesis comes from, com converting glycogen out of nothing. And... We have to be careful too, because some muscle, some muscle is converted as well. The body isn't sure how much, how long you're going to fast. So once it recognizes that you're going to fast for a while, something called protein sparing mode kicks in and it saves your muscle. So God is so incredible in designing us. It saves the muscle. It saves the organs, the heart, the liver. Nothing valuable is being con con converted into fuel except fat. Wow. And then also... In 2016, I believe it was, uh, a doctor won the Nobel Prize for autophagy. Mm -hmm. The word autophagy, it means autophagy, self-consuming. And so the body kicks into aut autophagy where now it's going towards cancerous tumors or tissue that's no longer During fasting. good. During fasting, absolutely. Uh, Walter Longo here at USC, head of longevity, has incredible uh, videos on fasting and, uh, and what it does during quite a few documentaries also of, yeah. from doctors who treat certain cancers and certain diseases. And these are not Christian doctors, well, at least yeah. not in the documentary that I could yeah. pick up, but they just take people through water fasting. Of course, they are very explicit. They tell people not to do it at home. You know, you need to be supervised, but still the idea that the fasting goes in and starts attacking these cells in our body. That's just incredible. Yeah, and w not only that, if if people aren't aware of this, but when you eat food, it takes 50% of your body's energy to digest and assimilate that food. 50% of our energy goes to digesting and assimilating and processing food. So if you stop that, now your body has all this energy to go and it actually retraces. It retraces old um, injuries and eyesight improves. How did that happen? Blood, the arteries are the, 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 the sclerosis or the hardening of the arteries will begin to, uh, diminish and the heart operates 25,000, uh, or I'm sorry, 25% less heartbeats because the heart is slowing down. And so you have all the, I mean, I can talk about brain derived neurotropic factor in the brain mm -hmm. that how that is increased. And that's goes, that would, uh, that's why those with Alzheimer's or uh, dementia or multiple sclerosis, those are neuron, those are neurotransmitters and these, these, these areas in the brain are becoming clouded. And so when autophagy kicks in and fasting, it begins to heal and repair those areas as well in the brain. So you can think of 
tons of areas from the liver to the lungs to the heart to the mind what, you know what about and, diabetes and uh, blood pressure well diabetes it, we have to be careful because type 1 diabetes means that you have to have insulin mm -hmm. your body doesn't produce insulin so you have to get those little insulin needles and usually in your in your stomach they'll they'll take that but then type 2 diabetes is actually diabetes that comes on later on in life because of our diet and lifestyle mm. so one of the top diseases in america is diet and lifestyle created can you believe that wow. So you go to a physician, they say, yeah, you got diabetes, you know, we're just gonna have to manage it. Here's metformin or here's, here's this drug. And, and all they do is manage it. Very few physicians will say, okay, here's what's causing it. You need to get off. And what diabetes is in a nutshell, it's called insulin resistance, mm -hmm. right? So I'm eating so much sugar, my body's producing insulin, producing insulin, producing, and it just becomes resistant to insulin. The cells become resistant to it. So now I have to inject more insulin into my body, hoping it uh, you know, we'll take that insulin and blood sugar levels. And when sugar, there's a lot of sugar in the blood, lots of things that are not good can happen. So it's a, it's a diet related mm -hmm. lifestyle choices, disease that very few people want to change. And it can, you, I've seen it reverse so many times, especially when I was in the health and fitness industry, uh, it takes a little, you know, it takes some couple months of Remember, food is either giving life or causing disease. Mm. There's God, God given food, God given food, whole God given food mm -hmm. is bringing life to the body, the phytochemicals, the enzymes, the vitamins, or Captain Crunch in a box is bringing disease. It's, it's not life giving, it's man created, man manipulated. As a matter of fact, all the nutritional value is removed often. Wow. And it's just a byproduct of sugar, oil. Uh, carbohydrates that have been enriched. And then that's why the body, that's why we're seeing so many, so many, look at the pictures from the 1950s in New York versus now. Mm -hmm. No one was overweight, very few. Yeah. Because we moved a lot more. What about more. people who are on medications? What kind of people should abstain from fasting? Well, it depends what the medication is because there are fasting clinics um, uh, up, up above me here is Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. you know, the True North Clinic where they do it or in uh, there's other fasting clinics and they will actually get you off of the medication before you start your fast. Oh, really? So it depends on the medication because if you're taking high blood pressure medication, you know, you can wean off of it and uh, under the doctor's supervision, of course, and then now you can fast even better or... Um, uh, Coumadin, you know, which is a blood thinner. It's getting your blood really thin. The idea is so the heart uh, can process the blood even better, and you have to wean off of that. Uh, if it's if it's um, you know something, it depends what the medication is. Because if you're taking, if, wouldn't you encourage if somebody is on medication to just go talk to their doctor first before they go and attend to do some kind of an extended water fast? Yeah, and then yeah, and let me just before I forget this thought, like stat, a lot of people right now are on statin drugs. Okay, statin drugs tell your liver to stop producing cholesterol. Hmm. And it, 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 what it does with the carbohydrates. And so now if you're fasting, you've got this things going on in the liver. And you can see how it's kind of, they're going to be kind of fighting against each other. So what I would do is, and what I tell people, tell your doctor what you want to do. Don't ask them. Because they'll say, oh, fasting's not good for you. Fasting, hmm. I don't know about that. Don't, you know, I don't think people can go more than three days without food. I, I think that's too extreme. Uh, you need to say, no, my lifestyle is extreme. Taking all this medication is extreme. Wow. Dying, you know, 20 years before I should and having no energy for my kids, that's extreme. I want to go on a fast and I need your help. And so, um, and there are physicians out there. Um, I, again, I don't want to recommend any, any place because some of these are secular, mm -hmm. but I know of them that will do Zoom with you, you know, 600 bucks a week, but they'll monitor your.